Hello everyone, my name is Felix Grobatsevich, I'm with PaleBlue, and today I'm going to talk about training in VR, the experience that we have as a company running different training VR projects. So with that, let's talk about what uh, VR training is and what sides of the training it can address. So we're looking at a number of hands-on jobs, jobs that potentially are carried out in uh, different hazard-like environments, jobs that require quite a bit of training and coordination in order to do them right. Sometimes those jobs, of course, involve us individuals, um, whether that's commercial diving or rig hands. A lot of times this is also uh, covering usage of equipment and driving different kinds of uh, machinery using joysticks, control screens and such. So that's all the reality of operations. And that is the reality that we have to address in our virtual environment. But there's other sides to the real operations. The operations that today are quite uh, encompassing and complex. This is where you would then control a lot of dynamic processes with gas, pressures, uh, currents. So all those elements, all those instruments, they exist in reality. So um, the next step is, of course, taking it all together. When all the different people are coming together to carry out a large complex operation. An example in offshore operations, when several companies cooperate uh, with their employees operating cranes and water robots, uh, piping to carry out one complex exercise together. So let's take a look at an example of a project uh, we have accomplished within VR training for bringing all the different kinds of people together for a complex operational training. So what is the technology that lies behind this kind of VR training that allows bringing many people together in many different roles, look at very complex operations involving a lot of physics simulation forces and multi-user environments? So what is the technology behind that? Let's uh, take a look at that. So of course, the processes, the dynamic processes that we looked at, uh, they need to be simulated in uh, modeling for gases, for liquids, for transition changes. That's something that is done a lot within uh, dynamic process simulations and dynamic process models. So here's an example of a system of ours uh, that we've implemented, the dive control simulator, which goes a lot into modeling those processes. And it is important to model things accurately in order to have a good and believable experience in training. Um, the other part is, of course, VR, and uh, a lot of times you would train in VR on the equipment, meaning you would need to have an operational chair with joysticks, buttons that you would control the equipment as you do in reality. And then you would operate those virtual cranes or equipment of uh, similar properties. How do we capture human performance? If this is not a crane operation, if this is, say, a commercial diver or if this is rig hands, uh, walking around, and your body is your instrument. So in this case, of course, you could use motion capture suits, and many companies and people do. Um, 
there is a more interesting approach to that that we've started to apply a number of years ago which goes on um, reconstructing the full body posture based on a limited number of sensors so in here we are only using the off-the-shelf headsets and controllers and we're reconstructing everything that is happens uh, happening with the arms and the body posture and the legs so this is an example of a technology where you wouldn't need a full motion capture suit in order to realistically capture uh, human performance within a certain uh, level of realism that is then needed so essentially you're able to uh, to go through rather complex operations uh, using only off-the-shelf uh, sensors and reconstructing the rest using inverse kinematics or similar approaches so this would then open for uh, commercial diving or other types of training that we have been implementing um, using only a limited number of input devices of course connecting several participants together is not a trivial task this is why you would need to capture people's uh, performances and then synchronize it possibly over a cloud so the moment you do that there's all kinds of uh, networking and synchronization and physics synchronization things that you have to solve but this brings uh, a lot of value into the training as soon as you can train several people because where those people are definitely professionals in their jobs but the errors and potential problems arise when it is cooperation that they have to look at so how do we specifically apply all those technologies and how do we put it all together for vr for training um, of course there's different kinds of training in vr there's what we call practical training hands-on training for um, out in the field jobs and there's a lot also happening within soft skill training where you would train a person's uh, uh, behavior in various social situations or work situations and of course we could talk a lot about soft skill training i would rather look into the exciting bits of the practical training for the remainder of this talk because there, there's a lot happening in that space and there's a lot of very interesting application of the practical training uh, for vr so here's a project that uh, we've been carrying out for a couple of years now together with the European Space Agency. Uh, this is a project where we are making a tool for training astronauts, real astronauts uh, in VR. So essentially we've made a digital twin of the International Space Station. And then uh, the users are able to put on the well standard VR headset and use their bodies in order to navigate in VR, operate equipment, carry out different procedures while also the zero gravity is being simulated. Of course, you're still seated physically in a chair, but um, in the simulation, you're floating around. So there's quite a bit of adjustment that us regular people have to do, uh, but it is essential for the astronauts to go through the situations that are expected and not expected out there uh, in terms of emergencies uh, so that they would be prepared for uh, whatever might happen out in space. So this is an example of a very interesting combination of elements from full body modeling to physics simulation to um, multi-user and distributed training uh, that we have been uh, implementing recently. So here's one. Uh, another example would be on something that is called um, location-based VR. So let's take a look at this one.
Right, so we've looked into different ways of training humans, uh, but let's not forget about the future of autonomy where a lot of hands-on operations are done by the robots. So this is why we're already making training simulators for the autonomous robots where they can experience different uh, situations in a completely simulated environments. The robots believe they're operating in a real environment, but however, that environment is simulated. So for about a year now, we've been writing, uh, running a very exciting project along with uh, 10 other partners uh, throughout Europe, a project that is supported by uh, European funding, where we are making a training simulated environment for the robots and humans to train together. And this is where the humans are using VR goggles, but robots are just plugged into the wall, the robot brains, essentially. They don't have the bodies, the physical bodies. So for them, uh, their feelings and their motors, so sensors and motors, are simulated. And this is yet another very interesting direction in the uh, training simulation and operation simulation. That has been a presentation of Pale Blue. My name is Felix Rorbatsevich. Thank you very much for your attention. Check out our website at www.pale.blue. Thank you very much.